Okay, I'm gonna do a must-have um, tool video for those that wanna get started in woodworking. And there's kind of two different types of a tool set that you can have, one for furniture making and one for more cabinet making. If you're going more, more toward furniture making, you can do a lot more stuff with hand tools. If you're going more cabinet making, you probably need more larger tools. So this is kind of one of those things where you're, it depends on what type of woodworking you're looking to do. I specialize in cabinetry, but I started in furniture making. So I kind of have a little bit of both. However, as you get growing your business or your, your hobby gets growing, you're gonna probably add quite a bit of stuff. I mean, every, every year you'll probably end up adding more and more equipment to your list. Now, I'm gonna start with more, what I think is probably one of the most basic um, tools to have for your hobby, whether it's furniture or cabinet making. And that is a table saw. The table saw to me is going to be one of the most important tools that you can have for your business, for your hobby. If you are gonna make more furniture, I would encourage you go try to find a good um, bench top or portable, as I call them, job site tool um, saws. Now, I have a couple that are in my trailer that I use for installations only, and th those are great. They do um, serve a pretty good purpose. Now, with those, keep in mind, get one that has the biggest rip capacity, meaning, the, the further over you can go with the rip fence, the better. So ideally you want something at least to be, I would say um, 30 inches would be my ideal number. Um, if I could go a little bit over 30, I know Hitachi makes one uh, that actually has really good rip capacity. Unfortunately, both of mine, I have a Bosch and I have a um, DeWalt and both of them only have you know 24 and a half, 25 inch rip capacity, something like that. Now that's fine for installations, but if you're if this is the only um, saw you're going to have in your shop, I would encourage you to get something maybe more along the lines of a you know a 30 inch or, or even more. So um, please though look on Craigslist or um, you know any type of a used uh, auction site because a lot of these machines you can get used for a fraction of the cost. So you can actually get a big cabinet saw like this one. This might be more intimidating, a little bit more than you need, um, especially if your, your requirements for uh, power, you know, maybe you don't have 220 volt in your um, shop or your garage, but um, if you, you know, you can get cabinet saws that run 110 as well. So maybe like a one and a half horsepower or two horsepower, um, but, these bigger ones um, require a little bit more power. However, look on the used market, try to find something used, and trust me, they are out there. You just gotta look. You just gotta look daily because when the good um, opportunities come out, they are sold so fast. So um, take a look at the used market for these, but um, the first one on the list for beginners, starting with the table saw is going to set you up. Now, one of the requirements of the table saw, in my opinion, is to be able to take the next um, on the list, and that is a dado set. Now, what a dado set is, is it actually allows you to make grooves. Now, this particular dado set is a Freud super dado, and they, they allow you to make grooves. Freud also make uh, what are called uh, safety dados. They're half the price of this, or actually it's a little less than half. But again, check the um, Craigslist because occasionally you'll find one used. But this is set up with a um, three quarter inch dado right now because I was gonna be making grooves. And this guy right there, again, every job that I do has um, dados and rabbits in it. So for all the joinery, they're all um, done with dados. Now, this may be an optional thing for you. Uh, this might not be something that you want to um, do right now, but if you're going to learn woodworking, I would encourage you to really learn the value of using dados for joinery rather than just butt cuts. Um, but um, you can also use a router to achieve 
dados and rabbits, but I'm gonna tell you right now, you're gonna be much better off with a dado to do joinery than routers because the routers is gonna be much more complicated to get everything set up. So although there's some um, overlap with some of the tools, I'm just gonna go down the list as to kind of what I do um, and what I would say would be the, the best things to um, start off with and you can grow from there. Uh, now, the next thing is, although you think, well, I've got a table saw, I'm good to go. So what you're gonna wanna do is actually get a saw blade for that table saw. You're gonna need some sort of a saw blade. Now, of course, saw blades come in all different um, types. The most important type of saw blade that you have is going to be the one that gives you the best use. So let's say, for instance, you wanted a um, a, uh, a blade like this that's going to give you, you know, really good cuts. It's going to give you good finish quality. So this is what's called a 80 tooth, and this is a fine finish, and this is made by Infinity. Um, Infinity make you know really good stuff. It's pretty pretty decent. This is good for cutting plywoods, um, sheet goods. Um, you're cross cutting. You're going to do um, solid wood. Um, this is going to give you nice results. Now this alone isn't going to be the best blade for you because it's 80 teeth. You're probably going to want something a little bit more aggressive for your ripping operations, which means you're going to be cutting you know, long lengths of stuff. Um, so you're gonna need a ripping blade to go with this. Now a ripping blade is the same type of thing, except it's got fewer teeth. Now, I've got lots of different blades. This happens to be one of my favorites. I should put on the list a rack to put all these things in. Um, this guy right here, so this is a ripping blade. Now, of course, diff there's all sorts of different makes and models of these, right? This is the thin curve glue line rip blade. Um, this is going to be a very good blade. I put I just did a video actually recently about these. These are my one of my favorite blades to have in the shop. Um, this is not something that you get at uh, Home Depot, but they do make some. That's Diablo ones. Freud does, but this is the industrial one. These are really good. So if you're looking for a good combination, get an 80 tooth and a ripping blade of some sort. I prefer the 30 tooth, but the 24 tooth ripping blades are good as well. Now remember also when you have um, blades like this, don't set them down on your table saw like the, the cast iron. So we don't want to mess up the teeth. Okay, now we got the blades out of the way. Um, now, of course, if cost is an issue, right, there's all sorts of um, opportunities to find, you know, things on um, sale. You can get good sales around the holidays, um, certainly, but go on Craigslist, try to find uh, pre-owned things, and you're going to save a lot of money. Okay, the next thing is one of my favorite tools, and it is a jigsaw. Now, this is my first jigsaw that I ever had, and this guy right here is um, super good and I know for a fact you can find these on Craigslist all over because these are you know getting kind of up there in age but you talk about a really good jigsaw you get one of these and you know find one that's well taken care of that's not trashed there's a lot of people out there that just trash their tools that's another thing even if you find something on Craigslist things might be a little bit dirty they might be dusty they might be a little, a little bit rusty but you want to look at them and to try to figure out how they took care of the tools because if they didn't take care of them um, they probably aren't going to um, be good things to buy um, now get a, a good jigsaw you can get these cordless you can get them corded so you can buy new or you can buy used but plan on spending you know if you're going to buy a good one um, you know the cordless ones they're probably going to cost you a little bit more money than the corded ones but if you have a set of batteries already from one of my next items, then you can just get bare tools and start building up a cordless um, selection. Okay, so on to the next thing, and that's going to be drilling holes or driving screws. You're going to need some sort of a drill. Now, drills come in all different shapes and sizes. 
I typically use uh, these type of drills. And um, the one I normally use is actually made by Makita. And those are really hard to find, so I'm not even going to put that on the list. But you can find them. Um, but the Bosch one, I really like this one. However, if you get one of these, just understand the RPM isn't very high. So this guy, when you look at this from a drilling standpoint, it isn't very good. This is going only going to go up to 400 RPM. So 400 RPM, that's full speed. That is not a, that's not good to dr um, drill holes. So this is great for driving screws, but you're going to want something faster for drilling holes. Now I don't, uh, some people don't really talk about that, but this is, this is a really big issue because if you try to drill holes with something that doesn't spin very fast, it isn't going to be very effective. So if you're just starting out and you're buying your first drill, I would encourage you to buy one of these. And the reason I'm going to say one of these is because this is a compact 18 volt drill. Now you could buy this with a battery and now you have batteries to start your other, you know, um, tool collections. Maybe you're going to get some other items that are going to be cordless and then they're going to need batteries. So this is definitely one of these tools. I would say this can be a secondary drill, but this primary because if you're going to want to use other things like um, bigger drill bits, you're going to need a bigger chuck and more power. So if you have this, I feel like Tim the Toolman Taylor is saying more power. If you're going to have this, um, you're going to be able to drive your screws, drill your holes, and you can even get some with a um, hammer function for going into concrete. That's really cool. But here's, here's one of those things that I'm going to say, and some people are going to say, no way. Uh, I'm going to tell you that I don't want any um, impact drivers in my shop because impact drivers, they don't serve a purpose for me. Building furniture and cabinetry, they just do not. Uh, they are loud. They don't drill holes well. Um, so I don't want them. I don't drive screws with them. So if you're a framer, then yeah, an impact, great. But in a shop, those things are so loud and obnoxious and the function of them they don't really um, serve a great purpose. So I would rather have a drill driver, not an impact. So if you have an option to buy either one, I would say buy the drill driver for sure and forget the impact. And get one with two batteries if you can. And that way you could start your collection. Um, now, the next thing on the list is a really important item. I don't have it up here. The reason I don't have it up here is because I can't really pull them away from their duties, but I'm going to tell you a shop vac. Now I have lots of shop vacs, right? You guys have seen all sorts of um, shop vacs in my shop, but this guy right here is an um, example of one of them. So I maybe have uh, seven or eight or nine or 10 or, or something. I, I lose track, but these vacuums are really important to have for dust collection, and for um, just obviously shop cleaning. So my first one was actually a Craftsman and it was phenomenal. It was loud and you know it did a great job. Um, this one just sits in here and it's completely um, caked with soot because it's actually in here all the time and it never leaves. And when it's on running pretty much like, I would say tons of time during the day, I'm collecting sawdust, um, sanding dust, routing dust, all sorts of stuff. These are really great to have. So a shop vac is going to be very useful. You can connect a vacuum to, let's say, a saw like this. And although this is made for a bigger dust collector, instead of getting a, a small vacuum like that, you can actually get a small version of this. So this is actually a big dust collector, but you can get a small one. You can put what's called a cyclone separators, and it's going to give you the effect of having a cyclone. What that does is it allows you to keep the debris, all the sanding dust and all that stuff, it, it'll stay here in the separator and nothing goes to the vacuum. So you connect it with your vacuum and now you've got a separator and these are separate, right? You've got to buy these, um, obviously. But for a modest amount of money, you know, less than $100, this whole thing is. Um, or you can get just this upper part for about 50 and build your own with a five gallon bucket.
So um, anyways, those are really good to have. Um, I would try to look on, again, Craigslist because you'll find them all the time. You can find used ones. Sometimes you're gonna have to get attachments to fit different tools, but they will definitely come with the hose. Okay, the next thing. I'm gonna say this is a really important thing to have, but if you have a table saw, you can do a lot of the same stuff with it. However, I find myself going to this kind of, you know, it, it's a staple in my shop, and that is a miter saw. What I would say though, is that my first miter saw was a Hitachi and it was a 10 inch and it was a non-slider. I'm gonna tell you that I think you should get a non-slider uh, if you get a 12 inch saw um, because the 12 inch saws, um, they have a little bit more capacity for a non-slider and it, um, a 10 inch saw, if it's a non-slider is only gonna cut like, you know, I don't know, it isn't gonna cut very much, maybe eight inches or so. Um, so, and that might be pushing it. Um, this guy right here is a slider, obviously, but it's got lots of capacity. Now, again, a, a note on these things. You can spend a um, hundred bucks, you know, you could go find a, a hundred dollar um, chop saw, miter saw, or you can spend, you know, $1,500 if you go buy a Festool Capex. And they're going to serve essentially the same purpose. They're going to cut your wood in half <laughs> and size it. Um, some are going to do a better job than others. So go on... Um, Go on Craigslist again and find one used. You can find these a dime a dozen. They're out there everywhere. And if you find a, a slider that fits into your budget, go ahead, grab a slider. Now the sliders are nice because if you do have large pieces, obviously you can pull, you know, and cut la large pieces here. But if you're only working with, um, you know, furniture type stuff and you're, you're getting uh, material that's less than, you know, eight inches wide, um, non-slider is going to be just fine for you. As with everything, get the best you can afford, get the best out there. A lot of times people say brands don't matter. Um, and it, you know, that is not necessarily the case. I'm going to, just going to be honest with you. Kind of brands do matter in some cases. Um, I'm going to say this. I don't think you can go and buy, um, you know, certain items, certain knockoff brands and expect to have the same results. So, um, there, there is some, there is some truth to the, you know, you get what you pay for. Um, but I, this is why I say, if you can find things used, do it because you're going to be able to get better value. Um, and you're going to get those name brand items. So anything you see here is kind of a name brand item, but obviously there's, you know, even higher brands, but these are kind of the, the major, you know, box store type brands. Everything you see here, with the exception of maybe, you know, this type of stuff, you're going to be able to find at a box store and, um, you know, name brand type stuff. The next thing is a sander. This is just kind of one of those things you're gonna need. You are absolutely positively going to need a sander. I would get a five inch hook and loop. What that means is it's basically Velcro rather than sticky back. You can take these off and replace them when you need to change the grits. Um, go out and find one of these. Uh, again, these are a dime a dozen. This happens to be one of the best um, tools that uh, Porter Cable made, sanders they ever made. Um, these are really super popular and these are actually one of my first ones that I ever got. So if you find a good random orbital sander, it's going to cost you, you know, between um, 50 and $80 for one, a five inch one. And then of course you can go up from there and get fancier ones. Um, but either way, whatever one you get, you want to make sure that you utilize the dust port and take advantage of that shop vac that you got. So this is gonna be one of those that you're gonna need an adapter for. So sometimes the box stores have adapters, utilize those because this is going to save you having the vacuum pull the dust. So as you're using them. Of course, sanders would be accompanied by sanding blocks as well. So I make my own sanding blocks and I would encourage you to as well. So you can just get sticky back a roll of sticky back sandpaper and 
These things are going to last you a lifetime. This is made out of maple and I love it. So I've got several different ones. This is just standard block, right? This is for sanding flat areas or rounding corners, you know, taking the sharp edge off of pieces. So you're gonna need sanding blocks, absolutely. This next item I'm gonna say is super important for me. I think it's important to get to know these, some people are a little scared of them, but there's nothing to be scared of. You just have to, you know, learn how to use them. Um, this is called a router. Now, this is a trim router because it's, it's it's actually made to do laminate trimming, but they have all different sizes of routers. I would just go ahead and whatever you can afford, okay? These are gonna cost you about a hundred bucks. If you can get a two-piece set, a two-piece set is going to be one with a plunge and a fixed base. This is a, um, a little trim router, so it you know it's just a, a nice, easy quarter-inch shank router. So this isn't going to take huge um, bits. It's only going to be for certain you know operations, like flushing. Um, it's a very common um, uh, thing that you'll use these for flush trimming items, and also maybe putting a round over or a chamfer, like you see on the workbench there. Putting an edge like this with the router like this is definitely doable. Um, so get whatever you can afford. Um, you know, I prefer these Porter cable ones. Of course, they don't make these anymore. Um, they, you know, all these, you know, the tools kind of change over time. But um, I have Bosch. Um, so Bosch, Porter cable, Makita, DeWalt. You know, these are all going to give you really good results from. Um, that some have pluses and minuses, right? Not, not they're not all equal. Some are going to be better than others, but you know, and you know what? You can get cordless ones also. So if you're looking to build up a cordless section in your, you know, shop, I, I think you you could go cordless. But remember that cordless don't last as long as the corded ones. When you're using a corded one, you can go all day long. With the with the battery ones, you're going to find yourself limited um, to you know maybe. Depending on the tool, you may only get, you know, 10 minutes of use out of it and then you have to charge it and it's going to take a while to charge. So whatever you think is going to be best for you, um, you know, go ahead and, and go that route. But um, definitely get a, a, a small router to start and um, then maybe work your way up to a larger two horsepower uh, two piece set. That would be a plunge and a, um, and a fixed base router combo. Um, those are going to be kind of the next ones on the list. But again, start, you got to start with something. Um, in addition, you're going to want to get a little router bit, maybe a little bit of a set. So the wood lines, um, the wood line type of a, a bit, a 60 piece set that they have that I got a long time ago um, for 200 bucks. And I'm telling you, that set does pretty good. I mean, unless you're putting it through some serious stuff. I mean, I have broken a couple of their um bits, but they do a pretty decent job. So if you're looking for something like that, you know, get one of those massive collections um, and, and you'll do pretty well um, for a lot of different purposes. I feel like everybody's going to need a nail gun. Now I went with air guns when I first started. I had all air guns, but now I pretty much always use cordless. So the cordless batteries, they last forever on these guys. And well, actually this is getting old. So this battery is kind of tanking, but I just got a new one of these. Um, this guy right here, uh, I mean, these work so well and you don't need the hose to worry about. You don't need a compressor. Just, you know, you just go. Um, now, of course, this is going to be one of those things. This tool is going to cost you more money than a compressor and a hose and um, an actual, you know, maybe a couple nail guns. So if you're looking for the cheaper alternative, I would go with a set of nail guns that you could get like from Porter Cable. They're gonna include um, a pancake compressor. So you're actually gonna get a compressor. You're gonna get a hose, plus you're gonna get maybe one or two nail guns. I can't believe some of the prices I've seen on these. So maybe you can get that whole thing for 200 bucks. Um, now, again, are they going to be the best quality? I don't know. But you know what? I don't think you necessarily need the best quality nail guns when you're starting out. 
My first nail gun out was an Airy, A-I-R-Y, and I got it at uh, Home Depot. I'm sorry, I got it at Costco. <laughs> Believe it or not, I got my first nail gun at Costco. Uh, I was walking down the aisle and I saw it and it was orange and black. And I'm like, man, that looks awesome. It was 30 bucks and I still use it today. Um, so, in fact, if you want to look in my drawer, all my air nailers, look at this guy. So this is it right here. These are all my nail guns, and this is my very first one. Look at that guy. I mean, doesn't that just look nice with the gold and the or I mean, just like, you know, there it is. So this is an inch and a quarter brad nail or 18 gauge. So obviously it shoots inch and a quarter maximum nails. And this guy right here, although you can get more expensive ones, this one is all you need for a lot of, you know, nailing. Um, these are gonna be more expensive. However, if you want a pin nailer, I'm shooting really, really, really thin 23 gauge type pins. This one actually goes up to inch and three quarter. And, um, but these are gonna cost you more money. Again, this is not something that I had to start out with. Um, but you're, anybody that's starting out trying to build a business or a hobby with this stuff, this is a great time to buy um, this kind of stuff because there's so many, you know, used out there on the market. There's a lot of people that have tons of tools and they're retiring and they're selling them out there for good deals. I am out there always looking at them for good deals. So um, you can tell the tool if it's got everything worn off, like all the logos are worn off, you know, or it's got spray paint all over them. I would say, you know what, forget that. That was probably, you know, mistreated. Um, go for ones that look like they have been used by homeowners that didn't really use them. That's what you're looking for. Okay, now the next thing. Um, if you're going to be doing installation of work, let's say you're going to be building cabinets and you want to start a business, you're going to need um, items to install jobs. And one of those items is gonna be levels. So you're gonna need a level, um, a couple of levels probably. So this is like a, this is an old Stanley. Um, I got this from my father-in-law who actually was a general contractor. <laughs> Look at how trash that is. Um, so if you want to, to get, um, I would encourage you to get a torpedo level, which is a little, um, you know, basically it's a tiny little level about half the size of this. And um, I would get a two foot level and maybe a four foot level. And I also would encourage you to get a laser. When, when these started becoming popular or at least more readily available, uh, I, I got on the bandwagon. So, you know, many years ago I got this and this is a ridiculously awesome tool to have for anybody that's doing installations, whether it's wainscoting, you know, if you're doing coffered ceilings, um, this, this type of a laser will go, it'll go vertical, sideways, you know, it'll give you all 360 degrees. I can take the laser and from one room of the house, I can shine it all the way to the other areas of the house and, and know that I have um, level areas for when I'm doing like paneling and stuff like that. Uh, but cabinetry, it's super important because you want to know if you're going to be building cabinets, what's level, um, you know, how, how to measure the floor, all that stuff. So I think these are really important to have. But again, this is kind of only if you're doing installations um, and you need, you know, if you're going to be in a business, you need to be doing, um, you know, you, you should really have one of these. You don't need to spend a fortune on these. You can get these um, relatively inexpensively. So you go, especially on the holidays, but, um, you know, 50 bucks, you're going to get a pretty decent um, l level. And another thing you want to try to find is one that's self-leveling. So um, you basically set it up and it automatically levels itself. You don't have to worry about leveling the thing. That's really important. All right. Now, the next thing is, again, on the same lines is if when you're installing jobs, this little guy right here is going to be your um, next 
favorite <laughs> installation tool. This guy here, if you're if you're needing to install any kind of jobs, I have to remove a lot of um, you know baseboard uh, from homes a lot of times in order to install cabinets. So if you're installing work, get one of these, uh, a multi-tool. And again, this is a cordless model. So if you're getting one for the very first time and you go to the store and you try, uh, try them out, see what fits your hand the best, right? They have lots of different models out there and some feel better in your hands than others. But again, try to find one where you can um, interchange the batteries because when you have, you know, similar batteries, you know, it works great. So the Makita um, multi-tool, I don't like the, the feel of it, so I didn't buy that one. However, this guy here, I did like the feel of, but there are some negatives to it, but um, it definitely does a, um, a good job and I can use the batteries that I use in some other tools as well. So. You know, you get to that point where you're just trying to find the best tool that's going to make you the, you know, the most efficient purchase, uh, whether you get a battery with it, because a lot of these don't come with batteries. So, you know, and getting them with batteries sometimes costs a lot more money. It's better just to buy them blank with no batteries. All right. The next thing, and uh, if you're counting, I think this is 13 ish or 14. The next thing is going to be for joinery. Now, if you're, again, building cabinets or in some people's cases, if they want to uh, build furniture, I would recommend getting a Craig jig. Now, this is the one I started out with, right? This is the old school one and I made this base for it. You can see it's super simple and it did not have dust collection. So I actually made this dust collection port for it. And this thing works phenomenal, by the way. You have no, no chips that come out of these. These things make a serious mess um, when you're using these. This was one of the first ones that um, I think that uh, I ever saw in the store. And then of course, when you buy these, oftentimes it comes with a little one. So if you're doing like um, stuff on the go and you just wanna have a little one to take with you to the job site, it's great because they come with them. So this comes with a drill bit. It comes with everything you need to get going. I just like to put it on this base so that I have these extensions. And you can actually, believe it or not, you can do really long pieces with this if you're doing like cabinet sides or whatever. Um, now I don't use this for um, much uh, cabinet wise. I use it for face frames. Um, so if you're doing a lot of face frames, cabinets, uh, that's how I build my face frames is pocket hole joinery. So um, that works great. I don't necessarily use it for cabinets, but I do know a lot of people that do um, for carcasses, like building boxes, they use this and or for attaching face frames. Um, but that that's, uh, you know, for whatever your use is going to be, um, get whatever you feel like it's going to be good for you. Now, um, sometimes uh, people um, would like to use dowel, dowel jigs for, um, joinery, face frames and all that stuff. And those are cool too. Whatever you think you, you're gonna want. Um, I think this is probably the most useful. The doweling jigs are probably gonna be great for you know a lot of things, but I think you're gonna find more uses for this guy um, than um, the doweling jigs. But I would encourage you, grab one of these. And again, that's why I also recommend the bigger drill because you cannot do pocket holes with a drill like this. It just won't work. You have to have a bigger drill even if the shank will fit, you just don't have the power in these little guys. So um, you're, you're kill the battery as well. So you get a bigger drill if you're gonna use the pocket hole jig as well. Okay, now the, the next thing, now the, I'm not gonna say that there's any number of um, importance on this list, except for maybe the first one, and that was the table saw. Um, the clamps, I mean, this goes without saying. You can, do a lot of stuff. You can build lots of stuff. You can use nails, you can use screws. Um, there are times when you're gonna need a clamp. Um, I use clamps for everything, every job. Uh, these are the clamps I use. So when I first started, um, super expensive, right? These guys, but I use basically every birthday, every Christmas to start building up my shop. Um, I would just use that type of time to build to buy stuff and forever i mean everybody you know 
the family, they always knew. It's like, all right, he's going to get some sort of a tool for Christmas or his birthday or whatever. Um, and that's the way to do it. Uh, again, try to find some used ones. Uh, these are hard to find on the used market. These are Bessie K-Body clamps. These are like the, um, the first K-Bodies. And these guys are super good. Uh, they are awesome. You, if you find these used, buy them. I mean, just whatever you can get, just grab them because they're awesome. This is 24. So I use 24 inch mainly for um, cabinets, but occasionally I'll use my 60s or 50s or 40s, whatever. But, um, you know, you can, um, you, you know, buy a lot of them, whatever. Now, this is the other style of clamp that's real popular. This is called an F-type clamp. These work really well, too. Get good ones. Uh, the Bessie makes, uh, I think they make the best clamps for sure. Um, and then, of course, these guys here. So these, you know, are great for um, when I do cabinet construction. When I'm, when I'm actually putting cabinets together, I have these blocks that I made that allow me to square up the cabinet and basically use these clamps to hold this on the cabinet. So if you watch some of my videos, you will see me using these. Um, so whenever you have an opportunity to um, have scrap wood, maybe you built something and you have a little extra wood left over, make these type of things. You can make all sorts of things with all your scrap wood. You know what? I hate throwing stuff out. Utilize everything. Um, this is a really simple thing to make and you're going to you're going to use these every time you build cabinets. Um, and if you want to see how I make these, just let me know in the comments and I will do a video on that. Okay, so the next thing, drill bits. Drill bits are, are super important. You don't have to have a massive, you know, huge collection of these guys. You just need to have something to get you going. Okay, these are general purpose. Um, bits. They're going to go through metal. They're going to go through wood. Um, these are really good. They go up to a half inch. And of course, you know, these are regular. These aren't Brad Point bits. These are regular, um, you know, titanium coated. Get these on sale. I think I paid like 25 bucks for this or something or 19 on sale. Um, pretty good deal. I think I got it at Home Depot. Definitely get some of those. Um, and as you get, um, you know, as you start doing more work, you know, you're, you can start to get different bits to suit your needs, like Forstner bits, what, whatever. Uh, okay, the next thing is a handsaw. You're not going to need this for everyday use unless you're, you know, specifically doing, you know, certain stuff every day. But for me, having this tool is really cool. I've got two different tooth patterns, as you can see. I've got more of a, a ripping tooth pattern there, and this is more of a cross-cutting fine tooth pattern. So those guys right there, um, you're you know, you're going to enjoy having one of these for various operations. There's different styles of hand saws. I would encourage you to go find something that works best for you. And um, this, I just love these. If you're um, cutting notches into stuff, these work great. Cutting notches with your table saw, you need to finish it with a handsaw or a jigsaw. A lot of times I'll reach for my handsaw. Um, or if you're cutting in like casing in a home to remove casing to do flooring, this is a great uh, way to do that. Of course, that multi-tool will do it as well. Sometimes this is a better tool. Um, but, you know, for the price that you pay for these guys, I mean, you're less than, you know, 20, 25 bucks or something for this. And you can change the blades or the, um, the whole thing changes out if you get them dull. So that's really cool. Get yourself a little trim hammer if you're doing like, uh, you know, cabinet work. You don't need a big monster framing hammer. This guy will get you, you know, where you need to go. So this happens to be one of my first ones that I ever had. And um, this, you know what? I love it. So if you go to a job site and you know, you're with framers, they're going to be like, oh, that's a little toy hammer, but you know what? You don't need a massive framing hammer, but you also would want um, a, uh, a mallet. So this is a hard fit face and a little softer face. I like those mallets. Um, so a mallet is going to do a really good job for you. Uh, 
I use this pretty much every job as well. The hammers, I don't use every job, but pretty close. And then the next thing is going to be a screwdriver. And this kind of uh, goes without saying, I'm sure most people have these, but I like to get the ones that have the, um, the changeable, you know, bits on them. So you can you know, have the small Phillips and the big Phillips. And then of course, if, when you pull these out, you have flathead and flathead. There's different versions of these. I actually love these ones from um, Lowe's and uh, I enjoy using these a lot. So these are probably my favorite um, of these little screwdrivers. And of course, you can't do a whole lot without a uh, tape measure. So you're gonna need a tape measure. And um, there's a little tip. I like to write the number on them as I'm working with them. So if you've got like, let's say you've got 10 of these in the shop. Um, it's nice to know the number that you're working on. So if, if I start a job with number two, I kind of want to keep it. And the reason being is that some tape measures read differently. So if you start with one tape measure and maybe it's slightly reading different, um, it might be a little different on number one. So, you know, I always like to write down that number if it is an issue, um, but, you know, or write people's names on them if you have different people working in the shop. So they just use that one. But Either way, um, get a good tape measure. Um, it's really important to have a quality tape measure. Now, this list is certainly, I mean, I tried to come up with 20 items that would um, be a good place to start. And I think I might have gone over maybe, uh, I think this is 20 items, but um, let, me, let me add an additional one. You're going to need something to put the stuff in, right? Whether or not you're installing or not. What I would encourage you to do is grab one of those five gallon bucket organizers, tool organizers, and, um, you know, a five gallon bucket to go with it, right? So buy a five gallon bucket if you don't already have one and buy one of those tool organizers. You're going to be able to, and buy maybe two of them. Um, you're going to be able to put a lot of this stuff on, in the pouches, that five gallon bucket. And those are really useful to have. So you're going to be able to put all this small stuff in there. And then of course, as you're, as you're buying like a drill that oftentimes comes with a bag. So if you buy one, utilize the bag that they come with, because those bags are way too big for just this drill. You're going to have plenty of room. Um, and of course, whatever, you know, tools like this, normally they come with some sort of a box or a bag, uh, utilize those for um, all the rest of your stuff. So you don't have to go out and buy expensive, tool bags. Um, you can literally get by with a lot of this inexpensive stuff and those five gallon bucket organizers, tremendous value. I seriously have several of them. This guy right here is what I'm talking about. So this, this organizer is actually in a, um, mobile cart, but I basically put this around. If you had a five gallon bucket, it would go around the perimeter, but you can see how this just holds all of your, you know, your small stuff. And I love them. Uh, but maybe like 10, 15 bucks if they're not on sale or depending on the brand, you might spend 20 bucks, but okay. Now there's lots of things that I didn't go over, lots of different machinery. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to get into like, you know, high end machinery on stuff, but, um, it, we can do that in another video. This is just kind of this, the beginning stages of your woodworking career. And, uh, I think I'm going to do a follow up video on some bigger machines as you start going. So thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you. Bye-bye.